So, Davy, I'm wondering in uh, in your school, uh, the Newark, well, the it's educators community. community is actually part of the sure. name that you chose sure. for the school that was chosen. Um, how do you? How are decisions made, and how do you bring uh, faculty and and parents and um, and children to the extent that children are watching or engaged in this into some of the issues that are happening in the school? I think you know it's funny because I sit back and I go, what does it look like for us? Um, yeah. I think it's a mixture for us. I would say the kids are having more democratic interactions where themselves. I mean, again, I have a pre-K to five, right? Fifth grade. So kindergartners will all decide collectively what do they want to name the fish? And why should the fish be named this? Or why should the fish be named that? It's, it's a big decision. The fish finally came into the classroom and it should be named Annie, but it's a boy fish. Well, how do you know that? You know, so five-year-olds, that's the argument. And we let them go through that process and they vote and create names and go through that whole piece. Do they actually know they're um, engaging in a democratic process? I'm not sure we've been intentional about telling them that, but they have definitely experienced that they get to have a voice, they're heard, um, and someone's going to make the decision. As a collective, the decision's going to be made. Um, so that happens throughout. Does it happen all the time intentionally? No, it doesn't. But I think the more we work with teachers and talk to them about it's important for us to hear children's voices, the more they get those experiences. Um, when we first got to the school, we, uh, both myself and Dina, who are both Bank Street grads, we decided we wanted to have a core leadership team, that we didn't want to have to sit and make all the decisions because we're new to the environment and most of the people who were there were there before us. So we should hear the voices of the teachers who were there. So we decided that anyone who was in any kind of teaching lead role, role could come and sit and talk with us. And we talk once a week and we talk about all issues in the building. We talk about lunch is terrible or we talk about we can't get these parents in, you know. So it started with a large group to so many teachers saying, I don't have time to come every week, but I know a core leadership team is happening. So it's our um, literacy coach, our math coach, our science lead teacher, uh, first grade teacher. You know, it, it depends on who's there. First grade special teacher, special teacher, um, that's who shows up. And we pretty much discuss what's happening um, data-wise. How are we moving? What are we noticing about reading? Things are not working. So it has been a slow process, right? So when we go to make a decision, we have to take some of the feedback of those meetings, right? Why are we having these meetings if we're not going to do something about it? So a lot of it, it seems like, well, didn't we have this meeting already? <laughs> we have a lot of meetings, and then we have a lot of repeat meetings, and then we have faculty meeting, and then we have grade team meeting, and then we make a decision, and then we sometimes have and to go back and change it, it. <laughs> right? Yeah. So that's yeah. what it's been, and it's... um. There are days when we don't want to have those meetings, right? It would be easier to get something accomplished if we could just make a decision. So it's been a little bit of a rub, but we are growing into it. 